Excellent. What's up everyone, welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for May 2016. Every month I do a couple builds. These are theoretical parts lists, so I'm not actually assembling anything today. So for any of you guys who are looking for actual builds, I highly encourage you to check out my uh, builds playlist over on my YouTube channel. So just check that out. I'll put a link to this in the description. There you can actually watch me assemble things. Uh, what this video is all about is helping you guys, especially if you're new, time, new to uh, computer building, just figure out what parts you should actually use, because sometimes choosing the parts, making sure they're all compatible is a challenge. So um, there is some f uh, some actual interaction with you guys in this uh, video series, so I do ask for your feedback, and you all provide that for me via straw polls. So last month in, what was last month? April, yes. In April I asked you what PC builds you wanted to see for the May 2016 video, and while it was actually quite a, a shootout here when it comes to the voting, um, the NAS build won right here with 28% of the votes. So I'm going to be doing a NAS build today, and then I'm also going to be doing a GTX 1080 base build. GTX 1080 was just uh, launched by NVIDIA, or at least paper launched. And uh, let me post this additional straw poll to those of you watching in chat. Welcome, and thanks for being here, everyone watching live right now as well. Uh, this is my question for next month, and it's kind of a more vague question than I usually ask on my monthly builds video, because I might not actually do a monthly builds video next month. At the beginning of June, I'm gonna be in Taiwan for Computex, which is always a very exciting event, um, but it means I m may or may not actually be able to do Build so for that reason I've left it kind of vague, but um, what hardware are you guys most excited about? Of course we have NVIDIA's new GPUs, the 1080 and 1070. Those were just again paper launched and they're available uh, on May 27th for the 1080. Um, Intel's new enthusiast CPUs, notice, notice the next three all have asterisks next to them. These are rumored, so I can't confirm or deny their exi actual existence, but Intel, Intel's supposed to have some new enthusiast CPUs coming out. AMD's supposed to have new Radeon GPUs based on the Polaris codenamed GPU architecture. And AMD also has new CPUs and APUs on the horizon as well. Uh, those are probably less likely to be available by next month as far as what I've heard. But you guys all please go vote on that, and when I come back and do this, in June or probably more likely July, I will base my builds on that. So um, I'm gonna save the NAS build and I'll do that second. I'm gonna jump right into the GTX 1080 launch build. So GTX 1080 is Nvidia's new GPU. Uh, it is currently the flagship in the 1000 series, if, if that's what they're calling it. Um, and at launch, it's got some really impressive like frequencies right out of the bat. Uh, the embargo hasn't lifted for full reviews of this card yet, so there's still some independent testing to be done. But everything NVIDIA has told us about is very impressive so far. The card has an MSRP of $600, or the Founders Edition costs $700. Now what's been revealed about the Founders Edition in the past few days is that the Founders Edition is essentially what is NVIDIA's reference design. But they're creating the reference design and making it more of a premium uh, product, I guess, for people. So they're charging a little bit more for the for the Founders Edition. It does have a really cool uh, cooler on it and everything. I mean, they, they've redesigned it and all, all that kind of stuff. So um, take it or leave it. But basically what I'm here to tell you guys is that this Founders Edition card is probably going to be the only thing available come May 27th. We're not sure. There are board partners who might also have cards available, but that means that if you're gonna get a GTX 1080 on launch day, you're probably gonna be spending 700 bucks versus 600 bucks that you might be able to get if you wait a little bit um, of time in order to get the uh, the, the, the non-reference edition, I guess, the non-founders edition. So all that being said, uh, let's talk about the rest of the, of the products in this actual build. So $1,800 is the total price of this. I felt these products were all sort of in line with what you would want to get if you're getting a 1080. Granted, you can shave 100 to 300 bucks off of the total cost of this build by shaving, you know, cutting corners different places. So for instance, I have a 6700K. You could go with a 6600K if you wanted. Um, I have a pretty nice motherboard. I mean, it's not super expensive, a Maximus 8 Ranger, but you could get, you know, a you could shave 30, 40 bucks off the cost of a motherboard. There's ways you could go about this. I also did some pretty decent storage options with a one terabyte SSD and a uh, two terabyte hard drive, which also are both kind of optional. You know, you could upgrade. But anyway, of course, the 6700K right off the bat, happy to say the 6700K prices have dropped. Thank God. Uh, they're down in the 350 ish dollar range if you're buying in the US at least. All these prices are in the US dollars. 
and uh, all these links to the stuff is going to be down in the video description on YouTube if you guys take a look. Uh, here's the CPU cooler I went with, and um, I actually have one of these in hand right now. I haven't done any testing with it, but reviews on this have been really good. This is uh, CryoRig, and they're kind of a newer company based out of China. Actually, I think they're out of Taiwan. Um, and this is a cool little, little cooler. 35 bucks for this little cooler. Uh, H7 is what it's called. And um, it's got really good ratings already. Um, you know, and it's got, you know, it's not quite like the Hyper 212. They, they got like a little plate on top to give it a, a better, cleaner finish and all that kind of stuff. And again, for 35 bucks, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. Um, you have to buy this at Newegg right now. And it's 35 bucks at Newegg. For some reason, it's not updated on PC Part Picker. But anyway, get that at Newegg. Uh, for a motherboard, we have an Asus Maximus 8 Ranger. Uh, this is an Asus ROG motherboard. They're not very big pictures of it right here, but there you go. Asus ROG. Um, it's mostly black with some red accents. It's got uh, excellent power delivery. Let's look on it. Let's look at it over at, at Newegg. It's assuming the Newegg website loads. Come on, Newegg. It's supposed to be fast. It's supposed to be fast, Newegg. Okay. All right, there's kind of a better look at it, but you can see, you know, it, it's kind of, it's decently kitted out for a mid $150, $170 motherboard. And again, ROG series, so you know, you got all, all kinds of good stuff. You got M.2 support, everything you'd really want for uh, for a LGA. 1151 motherboard. Uh, for memory, I, w I kept things simple with the Corsair uh, 16 gig kit, two by eight gigs. Uh, I feel like 16 gigs is what you want to go with. Again, here you could shave a few dollars off the cost by going with like eight gigs total. But I like this Vengeance series of memory because they are uh, they don't stand out a lot. They're low profile, they're black, they blend in. I feel like memory should either, you know, do its job and, and, and not be noticed much or be super blingy like, you know, the Avexir stuff that has you know, LEDs or, or plasma rays coming at the top of it or whatever. Um, anyway, moving on to storage. I decided, uh, let's, why not go with a one terabyte SSD? Those are becoming much more affordable these days. So SanDisk Ultra 2 is a great option. You can get one for a little over 200 bucks. Again, this is uh, somewhere where you could really shave a lot of money off of the total cost of this build because I spent around 200 and... 70 ish dollars on storage. I also included a Hitachi Death Star, two terabytes uh, internal hard drive. Um, Hitachi drives do a great job. You can get this at Amazon for 54 bucks. Again, lots of different options for your storage configuration here, but um, you know, go with what works for you. Save some money if you want, or hey, one terabyte SSD is, is pretty impressive. Uh, the GPU, of course, as already mentioned, is gonna be this good old GTX 1080 from, uh, from Nvidia. And I can't say too much more about this because again, there's more stuff that I can't even really talk about yet, but um, these performance numbers from Nvidia are pretty impressive and to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, next up we have the case, which is the NZXT H440. And I went with this because it's white. It's gonna kind of stand out, give a give a contrast to the uh, the stuff that you have inside there. Um, you know, well-designed case by NZXT. And uh, you know, of course, go with the black version if you want, if you like black. You can, you can do black and red here pretty simply. I thought this would uh, have a nice look though. And also since the uh, the GTX 1080 is still kind of that silver with the green on it. Um, hard to coordinate everything with that unless you go with like a black and green build. But anyway, uh, finally for power supply, I went with a bit more wattage on the power supply. Still sticking with the EVGA Supernova Next 750. Um, went for this one because it's it works out of the box. 80 plus gold. All the cabling is all black, so you're not going to deal with any ketchup and mustard BS. Uh, and it's fully modular. And uh, you know these. I, I can't stop recommending these because $70 for this is a really good price. This is with a mail-in rebate, of course. But just 70 bucks, I can't recommend any other power supplies while these exist at the prices that they are. I'm sorry. Sorry, but I can't. Uh, and that pretty much rounds it out. So, um, yeah, again, guys, $1,800 is kind of what I would recommend for getting on board with this. And uh, also the reason I went with that uh, stronger power supply, 750 watts, you could probably get away with 550 or 600, um, is I really think that with the 180 watt uh, design power of the GTX 1080, that you could probably do a two-way setup with this. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's very, very, very possible. Um, yeah, that's it for build one. Let's move on to the second build, which again, based on your votes and your feedback, was a NAS build. So I built a NAS kind of recently. Um, actually, I'm building another system right now. I meant to mention this at the beginning. See this right here? Look at that. That's the system I'm building right now. Once I finish this, I'm going to go and finish building this. This is a, this is a Silverstone 
power supply with the, the custom sleeved cables by Ensourced Customs. I was smart and didn't do it myself this time. I outsourced it. I outsourced to insourced. That's weird. Okay, um, back to my point though, which is that here is a uh, maximum storage, minimum wattage NAS build. Now, I recently built, built the NAS. I used some leftover parts, some parts that I already had lying around to kind of assemble the thing. And I think that's a very popular thing to do for a NAS. This is the NAS that I would build if I was building it from the ground up with new parts. So anyone who's thinking about building a NAS, I would really strongly consider looking at what you have on hand first already. Like, I mean, if you have an old Sandy Bridge system or something like that, it's a great option to take that and repurpose it for a NAS. Um, if you're using free NAS and you're using ZFS, um, you definitely want to have lots of memory and you also want to have ECC memory if possible. And that was the one thing that I didn't have for my free NAS build was ECC memory. And um, as a result, I'm considering rebuilding it once again. I'll see if that actually happens. But if you're building a new NAS, here's some options I think you should consider. First off, we have this ASRock Mini ITX. It's an Atom based motherboard. So it's got the motherboard uh, as well as an Atom processor built into it. Um, which is pretty cool. So that's why it costs a little bit more, but remember you're getting the motherboard and the processor there. I got 16 gigs of ECC memory. I got some WD red hard drives. I got a Silverstone NAS case, which has external bays that you can remove, which is very convenient. And I have, of course, our power supply, which is way overkill, but I'll come back to the reason why I chose that power supply in just a moment. First off, this motherboard. Let's look at it on Newegg, because they usually have good pictures, assuming it loads. All right, so this is a C550D4i Mini ITX server motherboard and um, look look how fancy it is. I kind of like this. Why do I like this? Well, it's it's got passive cooling for one thing. Since it's got an Atom processor, they don't get too hot, but it can get the job done. There's an a upgraded version of this motherboard as well that has an additional four cores on the Atom processor. You might also consider it, but it costs a good $100 to $150 more. So I decided to go with this one. Um, it's also got lots of SATA, so you'll notice um, it's, I read the specs and it listed like 10 SATA ports, but I'm seeing I'm seeing 12 on here. I don't know what the deal is with that, but you know, it's got lots of SATA ports. Let's just say you're building a NAS, you want lots of connectivity. You also have four RAM slots. So even though I'm using a two by eight gig kit of ECC memory for 16 gigs, I could easily drop in uh, more and upgrade that in the future. So, so that's pretty nice as well. Um, this was originally recommended by uh, Wendell. He did a build with this a while back. It's not necessarily brand new, but I think it's a great option and it's something I might actually invest in for my NAS because keeping those, uh, you know, if you're building a NAS for 24 seven use, keeping the power draw at, at a minimum, especially when it comes to the CPU is, is gonna be pretty useful for you. All right, moving back over to the uh, memory again, this is just a really basic crucial server memory. Look, it's, it's hideous and it's green, but it doesn't matter because it's DCC error correcting. It's got an extra, uh, it's got an extra little DRAM chip on there that it uses for parity. And uh, the only real drawback of ECC memory is it is, I don't know, almost twice as much as non-ECC memory. Also, Hero is snoring right now. Sorry about that. Um, Hero, wake up. <laughs> He's loud. Okay, uh, for storage, if you're building an S, I highly, highly recommend uh, getting yourself not consumer-grade hard drives. Like, if you look at the WD lineup, for example, they do a color base, so it's really easy to talk about. WD green drives and WD blue drives are not rated for enterprise use or for use in NAS bays or that kind of thing. So green and blue drives, I don't recommend. They're, they're only uh, used for like eight, eight-ish hours of a day use max. What you want is a WD red drive. Those are made specifically for NASes. Or uh, WD black drives or WD enterprise drives are also, they have the same kind of uh, special technology going on, on in there. It's made so that um, when there's vibrations from other drives that are next to it, it can handle that better without having uh, read-write errors and that kind of thing. Anyway, WD red drives, uh, I've been a big fan of. They're actually recommended by FreeNAS. Um, I have four of them. I put three of them in this build. Oops, I'm on the wrong page. I put three of them in this build, so you, that is about $450 worth of drives. I think this would be a great start out solution for somebody because you could have a parity drive, give yourself eight terabytes of storage, and you'd have um, one drive could fail and you'd still be okay. Um, but again, since a lot of NASs are built with kind of older hardware, that kind of thing, you don't, you, you don't necessarily need to buy any drives if you already have drives that you can use. But again, I really recommend going with um, drives that are built for NAS use or enterprise use or 24 seven usage. Um, two more things for this. 
One is this case, the Silverstone DS380B Mini ITX Tower case. Now here's another thing that you may or may not want to go with if you're considering an ass. This case, for instance, has these drive bays on the front, so it's made to be an ass. You, you can label all these, know which drives are where, you have a drive that fails that pops up on your, you know, your, your free NAS uh, UI or whatever. You can spot whatever drive it is, pull it out, pop another drive in, it'll rebuild and, and you'll be good to go. Whereas if you use a more traditional style case, you might have to dig in there to pull the drives out. It may, might be a little bit more difficult. Now the flip side here is that this uses a SFX power supply, so I did need to kit it with a smaller size power supply. And the smaller size power supplies are more expensive. Um, and then I was reading some reviews on this that said it's a little bit more of a challenge to build in if you need to get back into the system after you've built in it. Um, they were, you know, they were so-so on that. But 140 bucks for that, and I think the convenience of having those external bays would be convenient. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the power supply. Again, this power supply is kind of ridiculous for this build, but it's $90. This is Corsair's uh, SF series. So this is the new Corsair series that's, you know, SFX and fully modular. Look, nice cabling. You have nice black cabling to match with your green PCB motherboard or whatever. Um, but I didn't really get this for the black cabling or anything like that. All I got this for was because it was SFX and it was 80 plus gold. If you want to shave another 40, 50 bucks off the cost of this, there's 80 plus bronze rated SFX power supplies that are in the 250 to 350 watt range. And if you look at the total estimated power draw, of this entire system, at least according to PC Part Picker, it's 103 watts. So that's not all that much. Clearly, a 450 watt power supply is way overkill. But if you want SFX and 80 plus gold, those are the drives that are available. There's nothing less than 450 watts. Uh, I think one of those bronze power supplies would probably be just fine as well. But now you could add a graphics card to your NAS with. No, you probably shouldn't. Nobody should do that. Um, anyway, that is all for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks to all you guys who have uh, jumped into chat and said hello. Uh, Nocturne Kitty and Punk Poets is here. Wow, there's lots of people who have jumped in there. So thanks all you guys for stopping by and saying hello. Uh, I'll be back very soon with, with this build for my wife. Keeping that going right now. Uh, and then also, of course, I got Computex coverage coming up really soon, so I'm super excited about that. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and let me know if you like the video and post comments down in the comment section down below. Again, links to these builds and everything for PC Part Picker will be down in this video's description as well as individual links to all the products. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out my store, store.paulshardware.net. You can buy shirts and mugs and glasses and all that fun stuff. Thank you again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.